one. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Club Baroness. We're going to be here talking about the 2020 Spring Tag Tournament. We've got a couple of guests here for you. We'll have one joining a little bit late, but we've got Snow Schmidt. Howdy. Murder Mastodon. Hello, everyone. Evolution. Hey, guys. And myself, Bregan, as your host, as usual. So we'll be discussing today rounds three and four results. And then we'll be making predictions for the playoffs. Uh, there's also going to be the little reveal of who Murder is playing in round one because he gets to pick. He and Mario get that after finishing first in the Swiss rounds. So let's go ahead and get started with round three then. Let me just pull up the rounds here. Um what we're going to do this time for the, the sake of time, everybody's time is we're just going to let every guest pick a matchup they'd like to talk about. We might talk about one extra one if there is a, an outlier that we really want to talk about, but we're not going to talk about every single matchup for two rounds. Uh, so for round three, which one did you want to go over, Evo? He's muted right now. Okay, which Sorry one? About that. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I had my mic muted. Um, so I'm going to cover two of the round threes for us. Um, I'm going to cover the Murder Mario versus yourself and PDCM, and I'll be covering the Zanxis and Zexus versus Daffy and Ebony. Sounds good. So I reckon we'll start with uh, Zan and Zex versus Daffy and Ebony. Um. I was very surprised uh, at Daffy's performance. Um, Palace, he really showed up. Uh, Zan ran like a anti-shield kind of build, um, I think, to you know counter the many many shields that Ebony packs away. And uh, Zex was you know gonna do the handling of Daffy. And if you watch the damage, you're looking from Zanxis's perspective. But if you pay attention to the damage up top. Daffy is holding his own. In fact, I, I believe most of the time he's winning the, the fight. And, um, you know, they still didn't uh, win that matchup, but I was very, very happy and proud of Daffy's performance. Um, they then went to Highway. Uh, Zex had a lag out, and we incorporated the silent rule. Um Zan and Zex ended up taking that as well with a very heavy hitting stimulate heat Rian. Didn't Daffy and Ebony and win the third matchup though, so that, that way they actually took Highway? No, uh, they lost Highway, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they won. Uh, actually. I'm pretty sure they won the third think, round of yeah, Highway. Uh, yeah, I think that's the way it went. Okay. Um. I don't remember that, but I do see they had a 3-1. Um, but either way, you know, they went to Refinery next, and Zan and Zex pulled out a very um, scary charge, diabolical kind of pressure arsenal. Um, it was... It overwhelmed Daffy and Ebony uh, to the point where I don't even think they were paying attention to capsule count because they were trying to pop out Zan around, like, 14 or 15 capsules when they were down to like single digits um so definitely some tilt there but overall though it was every match was really close health wise uh, it was it was really solid Do we want to talk about that before i move on to the next one yeah i'll just i agree on um on palace daffy they, they're playing you could tell in the matches was the double team daffy um which they did pull off on highway but on Palace, Daffy was still able to hold his own. I think he even got hit with a lack at one point. He was still able to recover. I mean, even though they didn't end up losing that match. And then on uh, 
refinery. The, Daffy and Ebony went through their capsules really fast on top of being popped. So I think, obviously, Daffy did. Yeah, Zexus and Zexus did do a good job of controlling the match, but you do have to give part of it to, I think, a bad draw on uh, Daffy and Ebony's part where they had to dig more than they would have had to if they had a good start. From um, what but, I remember, Zex pretty much stayed in Daffy's spawn the entire match of, of Refinery. Yeah. And, and I think uh, that forced Daffy to look for an answer, so he was already low on capsules due to yeah. him looking and for something Zan was and just, then popping. Was, Zan was popping Daffy's caps, and then when Ebony came over, he would charge over to Ebony's base and pop him. And then Ebony did his fall off the map thing. He'd charge right back to Daffy and keep... It was, it was yeah, crazy, man. Daffy. I wouldn't want to deal with that. And then they ran the same thing on scene, to, at which they also won. They run the exact same arsenal. That's right, that's right. It was really well executed. Yeah. Nah, that's all I had to add to that. What about you, Snow or Brigan? I mean, I couldn't agree more. Zanxus just laid down the pressure with his charge and popping. I mean, it was just too much for them to try and even fight back on. And even when they could, it was just too late at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I like I've been pretty sure, impressed with sure. Daffy and Ebony so far in the tournament, but they it looks like they really just didn't know how to respond to that together. Uh, so that was one of the the first times we've really just seen a lack of coordination from them because we've seen that happen in some subsequent rounds and previous rounds. This charged diabolical trick has gotten to be kind of you know sexy lately for a lot of teams wanting to do yeah. it, and we've seen some respond to it better than others. And I feel like Daffy and Ebony uh, did possibly the worst into it out of anybody that played into it so far i'm not sure i can put my thumb on exactly why but maybe it's just a, a synergy issue there i don't i um I, I don't think it was a synergy per se um xan and zex just had a plan going into it to solely target daffy and then maneuver to ebony's base uh once he came to to help alleviate the the pressure of the two of them and um you know i think that's really what got it zex already as we've all always said has enormous pressure with his spamming of attacks and you know you throw in zan, zan right next to him popping all your capsules while you're being re and ice sorted and everything else yeah. and uh, not a lot you can do and everyone knows or everyone says at least that Ebony is typically a slower type of player in terms of his setup because he has a bunch of shields he has to dig through and a bunch, sometimes some recalls. He has to overwrite those before he can actually help you out. So that may have nothing to do with it. But I will say Ebony is very calm when it comes to people popping his capsules. So they still played around his ability to do that very well. Because Ebony's that type of guy. Like some people, you start popping their capsules and you can hear it, their panic in their voice or they get upset and they get instantly tilted. But Ebony does not uh, fall to that. So don't bite me, cat. <laughs> so does anyone else have anything they want to add about Ebony and Daffy versus Zan and Zex? No. All right. So our next matchup is two of our present uh, podcasts. Attendance is uh, Bregan and PD PDDCM versus Murder and Mario. And um, I'm going to be honest, I remember most of this match. I don't remember Highway very well, um, but I can tell Palace was like just a slobber knocker back and forth, left and right. Mario, you know, did an excellent job of zoning out and staying near Murder. Murder did the same. Um, I'm trying to remember how it eventually ended. I feel like it ended like really kind of like. I got stupid. hit by a vibration blaster because I cartwheeled the wrong way. That's like a week after I started playing as a cartwheeler, so I was a little flinchy with uh, it, yeah, and I yeah, cartwheeled yeah. directly into a vibration blaster. Yeah, I remember it was a stupid way to go down. But... Yep, I was pretty upset. <laughs> <laughs> but the match itself was just back and forth. You really couldn't tell at any given point which way it was going to lean. And, um, I had that back corner spawn, and I was basically trying to fight out of that corner the whole time because it's so wide open to getting abused. People like to congregate there, too. Yep. <laughs> yep, that back corner um, gets busy, and so I was I was basically just trying to fight out of there and get out of there most of the match. So Bregan and PD took the win on Palace, and then the next match was Highway. Um, Featuring the Bregan spawn. 
Yeah, from what I remember, there was a bit of uh, some picking on, some bullying going on against Bregan. Uh, but I don't remember exactly how it all went down. Um, I just had I that up high spawn different. where there's nowhere to hide, you know? Oh, no, I remember that one. That's the one where PD got really bad aura screwed, and you were trying to give a boost mine, you got turbulenced, and then we got on vibration, and I had aura cannon, and yeah, that was that. Yeah, I never hit vibration. And then I had the bad spawn, and PD never recovered on Aura, and so they yeah, just got to they got to just abuse yeah. me up in the Bragan spawn, and then mm. game was mostly over. Highway was it was great. So after that, we went to Lane, and um, Lane was not y'all's best showing. Uh, Murder basically picked off whoever was out in the open with Tiger Strength, Slide, and Twist Laser, and dashed away, and any time you guys made a movement towards Kamikaze, who I, I guess his spawn was up there. I couldn't tell if that was his spawn or if he was just purposely staying up there to, to draw the pressure to him. But either way, it, it was very, very one-sided on lane. Um, so at that point, we were at a 2-1. And then uh, Sign... Um, that was when we... Or what, Lane was the one where we ran that reduced entropy with the friendships, too. Yeah. And it just was really, really bad set up into the Tiger Strength lasers, which I know he plays there. I just didn't think about it. So it was a really bad map choice overall. And then we went to Sign, and um, Sign was uh, uh, just more lasers and Tiger Strength. And uh, who was it? PD got aura screwed? Uh, or he got no attacks yeah i didn't have any attacks oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah he got to like 14 aura before he had like an attack yeah so i mean you can't do nothing about it but overall though i mean i don't think anyone could have done it any differently given the same layout the arsenals came out and everything so you know they were good matchups regardless and they were entertaining yep i just want to shout out to Mario on lane. Mario did not have a defense he could use the entire match. And still <laughs> only got hit by like one or two Rians maybe, so it was pretty impressive. There were no Rians landed. Yeah. And the only defense he had was a fortress that he could never use. I hit him with a couple lasers, but there I don't think any Rians. Well, there might have been one early game before uh, like the, the friendships and the whole setup, but I remember once we had the full setup, we were never able to land any of those big seven damage reins, unfortunately. Mario is That's hard to do when you're under fire. Yep. Right. It was it was a again a bad pick into the wrong map. And so that was on us. Alright, so where are we at with our next matchups? Did Schmidt have anything he wanted to add to that one? No, I mean, I think that what it boiled down to was draws and aura versus draws on skill and the pressure that was put out by both teams. I mean, it was a valiantly fought, but at the end of the day, uh, the draws were just not in Bregan and PD's favor. Yeah. And like I said, it don't matter who it is playing. If you're getting those draws and spawns, there's just really nothing you can really do. That's why we picked Highway. <laughs> yep you know like every single tournament match i played on highway i'd swear nine out of ten of them i've been in that spawn it's just it it's been written that's where i go in a tournament on Dreaming highway stars i spawn up there <laughs> all right so which matchup is next um either you take it or schmidt take it y'all oh, the evo coin. took mine because my memories i thought Crap, you were doing a different so. one Nope. <laughs> All right, Schmidt, which one did you want to do? All right, so I was going to talk about the Evo and Sandal versus Ailes and Bam, the giant meme fight that it was. Um, Palace, it was pretty one-sided, and especially once the optimization hit the field, Sandal just kept Dan in place. And Evo, being Evo, had to dig for Young White Dragon. Uh, honestly, didn't even know the skill existed until I saw the match. And That was Sandal's idea. He wanted to fucking hit whoever we entangled with the most hilarious skill we could think of. And the whole plan was to charge it up at a really far distance and then run over and beat the dragon to the opponent and stand there and watch him die. Jeez. 
Yeah. It worked. Yeah. I was impressed. Yeah. Honestly, that was one of the best things I've seen in a tournament ever. It was a little BM, oh, yeah. but it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I and then after that. Over heat. Oh, Alice is here now. Well, uh, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure who that was, yeah. But after that, we went to Pano, and Evo, you laid down an optimization. I think at the end, I think by the end, that just hurt more than it helped, because Alice and Dan eventually pulled it out, and I believe so, it was fast bomb that ruined the entire game for y'all. So we went and tested why uh, what our plan was didn't work. Um, I had a theory why, and it turned out it was right. Uh, the plan was to charge up a key palm into a mobilize. He was going to mobilize. And the, the cool thing about key palm that differs from, like, Dance of Death and Miramasa Blade, all the other things that you can combo with mobilize, is you don't have to time it. All you have to do is hold down the button, and when the mobilize transports everyone, the mobilize automatically disengages the charging of key palm and releases it to hit. So there's no timing needed. What fucked us up was I was facing a, uh, in the direction of off the lockers. So when I key palmed, it sword canceled oh, instead of actually yeah. hitting. And um, that that would have been a 20 plus damage key palm to everyone but me. And you saw what happened instead. Nothing. So Psycho Blade can hit on top of the lockers. We've learned from that. Yeah, yes. apparently. Did not know that. Yep. Um, yes. Learn something new every day. Uh, um, excuse me, Evo lost a fast bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go rewriting I history. Um, uh, it, it is. You, you won with Young White Dragon, and you lost to fast bomb within like he 10 minutes. Within I mean, 10 fair, minutes, had, both of these things happened. I only happened. had three key palms in that entire arsenal. There was no other attack, so... Wow. It'd have been, yeah, the, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a treat for us, right? We get to see somebody win with Young White Dragon and then within 10 minutes of that lose to Fast Bomb. You almost got to see a super cool. Oh, the cool thing about Key Palm is, too, when the Mobilize hits, um, it that blue glow that is in your hands when you're charging Key Palm, it, it doesn't go away when you mobilize Key Palm. It, permanently for the rest of the game is a giant glowing blue orb in your fucking hand <laughs> so we didn't get to see that either but that would have been cool to see too would have been cool well we Have could always we can always things. make another video like that because we've been making meme videos today we could do another one like that sometime where we do some funny oh. combos um but honestly if you'd asked me like two attack skills that i thought would never win a tournament match like, those two would have probably been in my top five. Young White Dragon and Fast Bomb, because they're both so bad. But I I, we saw I, it. I apologize on behalf of all of us. No, we completely, like, interrupted you and took over. Keep going. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I was going to say, after that, we went to a uh, highway, and we got to see a 20 damage finisher pop off at the very end and uh, end the match, which was entertaining to see just from across the map. Just Evo sitting there, charging, waiting. And then out of nowhere, just 20 damage finisher finishing off the match. That was a good one. Uh, after that, y'all went to late? Yeah. And then a Chaos was put down, which I feel like that's what finished the match off. You just had that Auric in a blaster, and you and Sandal just kind of kept the slate clean, pushed it, kept the pressure down, and finished the match. It was the most straightforward game the entire series. <laughs> I don't know why we went with Chaos. Like, we were going to do something else, and then, like... Last second, Sandals like, nah, let's run chaos. So it just it worked out for us. Got yeah. lucky on it. Which which one of them did you kill with the young white dragon? Was it Dan or was it Alice? It was Wait, Alice, I don't right? remember because I didn't really pay it was attention. Dan. I I don't know. I just remember Dan. getting like a fire to Hana and a Rian and a tiger strength in my starting hand, and the whole game plan for that arsenal to even remotely work was I had to kill one of them fast in order for us to be able to single out the other so I, every that entire match up until the young white dragon was kind of a blur alice were I you the one, one that was entangled no 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 he was dan oh uh, it was yeah, dan I think you're yeah. lying to save face but okay 
Nah, I had it pulled up right here. It was Dan. He was stuck at 17 health, and he hit him with a 25 damage on White Dragon. Dang, I was gonna. If it was Alice, I was gonna ask him what what thoughts were going through your head as that crawled towards you. <laughs> Did you even realize it was going to kill you? Because <laughs> I, I think a lot of players wouldn't have realized it was going to kill them. I imagine if you ever seen the movie had. Trolls Two, where he's like, "Oh no." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, and I am disappointed with myself because I had I had Boy in that match, and I didn't uh, use it against that Gihin and that and that Rain. Ah, uh, so that's what the Rain was. That would have been good. Yeah, would save you some time there. I tried to overheat with the particle convert, but, but I died too soon with that with those attacks. Yeah. And Dan Dan was just spamming this the the space bar, trying to escape that. <laughs> then tango. See, wait, does he play with a mouse and keyboard? No, oh, Dan, Dan. I mean, it sounded like he's. I mean, he said spacebar, so yeah, he does play with a mouse and keyboard, is what that would interpret to. Interesting. Hmm. That sounds impossible. So I have another question for you, Alice. Um, see, they played this elaborate setup to get the young white dragon to work. You just used like a ton of speed ups and a fast bomb. What? And, and it was a very unique situation that shouldn't have worked because fast bomb is garbage. But why did you bring fast bomb in the first place? Like, what, what's how is that supposed to work without Evo standing on top of a locker charging his laser? I actually played against that arsenal. Like, me and Ailes played like two days ago, maybe. <laughs> and it, he hits you with normally he has speed. Uh, he burdens you, and he has the one where he runs faster. The lightning speed. Yeah. yeah. Lightning speed, yeah, um, and he puts down the environmental gravity. too. Yeah. They okay, so he <laughs> runs up next to you, lays it down, and then runs away. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> I just went to the skill list and I saw that 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 fast bomb and and just tried to to, to implement that in an arsenal. Okay, all right. I like it better now that I understand it, because at first I was like, he's just running fast and laying fast bombs. I don't get it. Yeah. The Psycho Blade was, at the time, the bigger threat, but... I mean, the fast bomb was knocking you off of the lockers, too, so it was yeah. it was doing what it should. Yeah, I mean, when you played that optimization, you were facing hard that... Well, the opti had to be it played. Was actually the, the... It was actually the debris that killed, that killed Sandal. Yeah. With the fast yeah. But. Alright. So, Bregan and, and Ailes, I, I kept to my word, man. I, I, we, where was your finisher? He he was using I, finisher, I was on using that, finisher on that on highway. In, oh, yeah, highway. I was using That's what he highway. had to. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'll talk briefly about Nathan and Wolf versus Mirage and Darcia. Um, I just thought that one was a fun one because we get to see two of our oldest teams, you know, go head to head. And I want to throw a shout out to Nathan and Wolf uh, for showing a lot of improvement in this tournament. They actually put in quite a bit of time uh, in some of those later rounds, and they were playing quite a bit better. And it shows in that round. They took a really clean 3-0 there uh, after having put in some extra work. And so that one was a series I enjoyed uh, quite a bit. I always like to getting to see some of our legacy players show up and have good showings. So I, I did enjoy that one. Did anybody else catch that one? Have some bits they want to add in? I did. I mean, it wasn't a horrible matchup. Like, uh, Mirage and Darcia did their oh. thing. They played to their usual... Uh, excuse me, that sounded wrong. They played like they usually do, but Nathan and Wolf being the more veteran teams were able to take advantage of it. There wasn't they did Nathan and Wolf did show up, as you said, to the match. Um and Mirage and Arcia I, I think are just technically not as good as them, so they couldn't take advantage. Yeah, it's something you were adding, Evo? No. No no. I was uh trying to remember um the actual matchup and I do remember like it being yeah. fairly one-sided. Um, I would uh, call it one-sided. On, maybe Palace was. But. Palace, specifically. <laughs> Palace was. Um, <laughs> yeah, Palace was. 
But I noticed uh, Mirage and Garcia love hiding behind that escalator. They have done this in a few games I've watched where they always get stuck behind that escalator on the left side. It's like their little hidey hole. <laughs> and both games, they're just getting rained on. I think both times with vibration laser, and they're just like stuck there and they don't know what to do. And it's like, damn, that sucks. All right. Next matchup. Unless anybody else has anything else to add, we can go to round four then. Round four. Uh, you want to cover the biggest surprise of round three? What matchup surprised you the most? Uh, I think we'll we'll do that for like the entire Swiss rounds. We'll do like what matchup okay. surprised you the most. All right. In that case, round four then. Yeah. Why don't you give us the matchup you've picked for round four? Uh, I'll do the Evo and Sandal versus Nathan and Wolf. So on Palace, it looks like everyone just decided to, decided to play straight up. Oh, computer turned off. Everyone decided to play straight up on that round. Um, can't remember exactly what was what everyone was using, but I remember there was no no real jank ran. Um, My arsenal was built to counter jank, and I thought they were. Yeah, that's jank what too. it was. Yeah, you ran like a. St- like a standard, um, just in case, as I like to call it, build. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I then, named the arsenal uh, Murphy's Law. Yeah, <laughs> for that's that exactly reason. Exactly what it's covered. Um, and then the next round, if I remember correctly, you guys—that was the refinery match, right? Oh yeah. Where? Uh, oh yeah. So Evo and Sandal did take game one because um, playing straight up is not Nathan and Wolf's strong point, especially when you have someone like Evo. No. Nothing taken from Sandal, but Evo has been a tournament winner twice now. So uh, technically, he's the best in the lobby. Um, so it was, it's hard for them to stand up against that. So they were able to take Palace fairly easy. Next round, uh, for the record, refinery. that pickup was not easy. That that, that <laughs> you, actually had me like nervous. You made it look easy, Evo. I really <laughs> didn't feel like it, dude. I was I was pretty nervous. Well, in my head, you're not saying anything during the thing. You're just like, yeah, I got this. Uh, and next was Refinery, <laughs> where we saw... Th- I didn't quite understand what Nathan and Wolf were running. I'm going to take a guess, though. So Evo and Sandal ran the classic Vicious Balance level baton, but it was very slow. And I don't know if that was due to the setup or if that's just the way the the deck drew. But either way, it was way too slow uh, with not enough pressure to back it up. So. It's um, not that it was slow. It, it's that that arsenal is built to have attacks that we can eat up their aura and then spawn camp them. But they ran a vicious balance deck too, or something like yeah. it. So we didn't eat up no aura. It just ate up mine for all my attacks. So that's what made it slow. Yeah. So and that, that game pop then, too. Yeah. And then they, I, I think they just had shatter. Yeah. I can't remember Which, exactly what it was, but. In an arsenal that's 20 <laughs> skills and 10 aura, Shatter fucking hurt a lot. <laughs> did they end up popping you out? I, I think they did. They popped you yeah, out. Yeah, I got popped out. Yep. And then Sandal hid for the remainder of the time. That game just ended in a draw. Um, very, all the way to 10 minutes. Very slow matchup. Um, kind of a pain to watch. Uh, <laughs> the next round, they went to lane, where Evo decided to... Evo and Sandal, they went a little more straightforward. I'm still calling it a little jank, because I saw... Were you guys running environmental on that one? I can't remember, but you guys no. had the shatter. Sandal ran Tiger Strength, Slide and Twist Laser. I ran Speed Up, Ice Sword, and Shatter, and Shatter, Sword. yeah. Yeah, and you were camping, I believe it was uh, Nate's base pretty hard. Or no, that was Wolf's base, excuse me, pretty no. hard. Um, and he couldn't really do anything to combat the close range. Uh, they, and then Nathan and Wolf did show their hand with a finisher to Vicious Balance, getting everyone down to zero. But Evo and Sandal were playing low-cost skills, and it didn't affect them at all. Um, so Evo oh, took that round as well with Sandal. And I actually cannot remember the last round. You want to uh, refresh the my memory, The last round we Evo? played was... Uh... Yeah, I can't remember it. Oh, God, what was it? Uh... Uh... Pano. Oh, yeah, that yeah. one. Evo had a flame yeah, we, sword. The, the end. Yeah. Sandal also had a flame sword. <laughs> and yeah, Sandal, we, yeah there, were, there were flame swords. And uh, it looks like Nathan or Wolf, I can't remember which one, got aura screwed. And 
Evo, and they did not have any fortresses, so they got hit with approximately 40 damage worth of flame swords. Yeah, it was... It was just, I, I spawned in, and I looked down, and Wolf right below me with no aura, and he's like, not want over right. I had a flame sword and a diabolical, so I figured I'd go pay him a visit. And while I'm in his base, I didn't even know Sandal was, like, tuning Nathan up with a flame sword, too. So it all ended yeah. up in the same area with nothing but flame sword. Yeah, it wasn't, I'm not going to lie, it was the most entertaining series to watch, but it was still interesting to see what you guys brought. So, yeah. Yes, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, we I do don't not have like that the finisher vicious balance combo. I will say that. No, me and Sam will discuss that too. We like our, we prefer our disintegrate vicious. It seems to be much more uh, effective because yeah. only one person has to get zeroed out, not both on our team. Yeah. All right. What one did you have for this round, Schmidt? I was going to take uh, Sanctus and Sexus versus Murder Mario. All right. Top of the table matchup. Bring it home. Yeah. Um, so the part that kind of threw me for a loop the entire time is Sanctus and Sexus kind of did the exact same thing all of the games, and it really only seemed to work on Palace of trying to pop uh, Murder Mario out. Um, and on Palace it worked. They got Mario down to zero, Murder down to four, and then two. Um, and just kind of took it home from there. Uh, Mario died a thousand times, so at that point it was kind of over for him, and Murder was just trying to clean it up. He, I mean, Zexus and Zexus ended on really low life total, so it was neck and neck at that point, but I think Zexus and Zexus, just having the both of them up is what finished the game out. Um, and then, I mean, the same kind of thing happened. They went to Highway, they tried popping, and Murder Mario just kind of shut it down. And then, same story on lane. They tried popping, got shut down. And then Refinery was the interesting one, because I believe it was Mario that went over and counter-popped uh, on Zanxus, which was a very interesting play to see, and it worked really, really well. Um, Zanxus was... was just, yeah, he was just too behind to even try and continue popping. He had to keep coming back to base to try and get Mario off of his capsules, but by that point it was too late, and him and Zexus just got double teamed as he was running out of capsules as well. I really want to give a shout out to Murder specifically on Palace. Even though they lost, um, Murder was not running away and hiding. He was in both their faces defending his own capsules, and winning the the in a sense the uh the fight i guess you could say oh yeah I mean, definitely you sex like three four times and you just didn't have the aura to finish xan off but i feel like if you did you would have pulled it through yeah that lightning sword cost 12 by the end of that <laughs> yeah i was very impressed though you uh you held your own really well at the end oh yeah Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it was a fantastic match. Uh, I honestly thought that Murder and Mario were going to take Palace, and then it would have been a 3-0, and we would have had a f possible freak situation where Ebony and Daffy could have advanced over Zanxus and Zexus despite having lost to them twice. Uh, but we didn't oh, get that. Yeah, that would have been weird. We didn't get that. They wouldn't have been able to do it anyway because they actually didn't win their series 3-0 anyway. Uh, but True. in general... Uh, it, it felt like this is one of those things Zanxus and Zexus do every once in a while is they find a funny strategy like this and they see who they can get away with it versus. And then they run into a top team with it and they're like, oh, never mind. Except for this time, they didn't oh, never mind until after the series, it would seem, uh, because they kept trying to do it for pretty much all four games in different iterations. Um but that ride-or-die pop strategy, I think, just doesn't hold up at the highest level of play. Because I also ran it this round uh, versus my opponent, for example. But when we were scrimming with it, when we scrimmed teams that were like on that upper echelon of players, uh, it was much more difficult to pull off, and we had kind of come to the conclusion that we weren't going to do it unless we were up in the series. And so uh, it, it's, it's something that... 
I hope we don't see any more out of Zanxus and Zexus hmm. because I want to see them get back to their style, which is a little bit more traditional beatdown. Uh, That's something I want to mention. Like, this is not the same X and Z that I remember. Yeah. So I was going to say, I think one reason they decided to do that, after they won Palace, you can't hear them talking, but if I had to guess, they did the math and they already knew they were going to end up in the top four and they didn't want to show their hand for future matches. That's my guess. Could be because possible. They were, after they won that one, they knew they could not get eliminated from the top four. I don't so think Zanxis point, usually plays like that, though. Zanxis, he, he's usually not worried about not sharing strats or something. Um, Maybe. I don't know. I... If they have tech, about that. I mean, if they have tech that they've been working on, then, you know, I wouldn't think it's too far-fetched for them to hide their hand and wait for when yeah. elimination comes around. Yeah. Well, either way, the next, if I do play Zanxis again, I hope he plays his normal style because it's a much more fun matchup. And I will say, popping capsules in general, I always say this, especially even in, like, pickup games, especially when my teammate does it, is annoying, but it does not win games a lot of times. So, it's annoying, but it's not a very reliable strategy. And then one more thing, shout out to Mario for ignoring me on Highway, because I kept getting Zexus and Zanxus' name confused when telling him who to frighten. That shit was <laughs> ultra infuriating. Okay, that's all for me. Oh, that's right. Yeah, your frighten combo absolutely dismantled them on Highway. That was disgusting. Oh, yeah, I... I... I really like that. I've, I've seen you and Jay do the Frighten Rock Shot, and the Blaster is just so much more effective. Blaster Ice Sword. Yeah, I really like that build. Yeah, I was thinking, I was like, man, how come I haven't played a Cartwheeler yet? Everybody else is doing so much better with the car. Oh, that's why. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> All right. And then well, let me throw this back in here. Sure. Is the confused gravity on highway? It just messed Zanxus and Zexus up way too much for it to be successful for them. I don't actually think it messed them up, truthfully. Um, maybe with the frighten and trying to like anticipate that, perhaps. But um, at, uh, when it you really boil it down, I really don't think it super messed them up that much. I mean, it may Zan have not messed them up, maneuver. but I, I think it was a dead skill. Because honestly. I got hit by one Rian because of it. The first Rian I got hit by was because I cartwheeled the wrong way. And after that, I honestly forgot it was down. Yeah. Yeah, most top so players are pretty well, you know, they can get the handle of that environmental. And so I felt like, Thank yeah, it, and Wolf. it was a dead skill for one, but also for two. I think it was affecting Zanxus and Zexus more than Murder of Mario in what they were trying to Maybe do. Maybe that way, when you look at it, yeah, it might have been affecting them more so. I, than I just don't Mario. think it's necessary in a charge DBT deck no, either. I don't, I don't think so either. It's kind of cute on don't. Refinery, but if you're playing a team of the caliber of Murder of Mario, it's not going to do anything on Refinery. I, I mean, right. if you're looking at laying an enviro that is either in faith or psycho i mean i kind of feel like necronomicon or um uh what is the other one hold on i'll tell you right now uh the one that reduces everyone's speed by 20 percent. that i feel I, like oh, could have been yeah that would have been interesting yeah yeah a lot more beneficial when you're yeah, charging to I 100% forgot about the environmental being down until I rewatched the match. And then I was like, oh, yeah, there was a confused gravity down. I didn't <laughs> didn't notice it during the match at all. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have anything else they want to add? Mm -mm. All right. Go, Mario. Yes, essential employee Mario clocking in every week. Oh, he put in overtime. <laughs> he did. All right, um, we got at least yours and then maybe one more for me. Um, I know which one you're doing, Evo. Be nice. No. <laughs> um, so I'm covering Bregan and PD versus Madman and Math. And um, it's the first actual, like, oh, no, it's not. We got to see the murder in Kami. So the, the way they played was... Um, very like I don't know. It, it, there was it didn't feel like there was any flow between them, and I've seen them play other teams, and that synergy was there. But when they played Bregan and PD, it felt very uh, flustered, and I wasn't sure if it was 
because of the pressure that Brigham and PD put down? Because I didn't really see a whole lot of like, oh my God, help me, dude. I'm over here getting, you know, jacked up. I need you over here. But it, it was, it was more uh, graceful. Like there was quick switches between the two of them, pop shots, and it worked like really effectively. I saw a lot of counter punching too um, on Palace. Like uh, I think I don't remember if it was you or PD who had blasters and lasers. <laughs> we were both running like the same arsenal. Say that's both of them. Uh, yeah. Well, well, I, I watched Mass get hit by like a blaster uh, in the middle of him casting an attack at either who shot him with the blaster or, of course, the other person. And that counter punch play style like really whittled them down to, uh, you know, to the point where or it was Madman actually, not Math. Sorry, Math was the one who was making all the pickups. Um, but that that type of like synergy that you saw with Brigham and PD felt very natural and fluid, but it felt very lost on Madman and Math. And I think that's what started them off on the downhill spiral that they went on in this matchup. Because what was the uh, second match? It wasn't Pano was the last one. What was the second? I think one? they went highway. highway. Highway was the yeah, one where Math tried to run mm-hmm. the charge shatter, and, yeah, and, and I just PD stood up right on top to of the other. stairs and guarded both our bases. Your spawns, yeah, your spawns were right next to each other. You had Rian. He had charge and then i want to say dash too but no, uh, the ang- madman had dash madman had dash okay. and, like, well the angle exhaust. that you the angle that you were at up top there was you couldn't i don't even know you'd have to wait till literal last second for that re to make contact before you dash and that timing I, I see a lot of cartwheelers don't really have the timing perfect down for dash for some reason but you basically just picked off madman as he was coming back to you know pd's base and math had to either charge over or fight his way over and it 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 just it didn't work out the charge pop at all with you and pd right next to one another and then pano um i guess there was some confusion uh about 45 seconds in brigan jumped up on the lockers and put down a lunar force um I don't know if we didn't properly state it enough, but we've been running this, you know, um, soft hang rule for three, four tournaments now. Oh, it's longer than that. Um, it's almost two years now. Yeah, mm-hmm. like if the if you put an enviro down and the the ground beneath it is unbreakable, it's a valid hang. It's a valid placement. We can post um, a link uh, if to more specifics if people need it. But. I just want to clarify for everyone who might not have been 100% aware like Madman was. And, uh, if you place an Enviro and you can destroy whatever's underneath it, holding it up to make and it becomes free-floating, that is an illegal hang and it will count as a loss. But where Bregan placed it, it was perfectly legal. Um, and Bregan and PD were gracious enough to Madman return to lobby and Bregan and PD were gracious enough to give him another chance on a different map. And, um, I mean, what was uh, the last map? I can't remember. Refinery, I believe. Refinery. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. It just, it was rough. It was a rough, rough game for them. And I, I I'd like to see them come out another time on in another tournament, maybe with a different mentality in mind. But, um, you know, I think you said it best. PD. I think you said it best. Where like math and uh, Madman didn't have a flow. You know, you know, people they didn't they don't practice too often, which is fine. But I think their play styles for people who don't practice that often do not mesh at all. Like Mad Math, Madman's a little slower. He plays less attacks than most people do, while um, Math is kind of the opposite. He runs a lot of attacks and tends to be uh, a faster player. Math is usually so, all I, over I don't the think place. He'll be attacking one side of the map and then the very other. Well. And it no. really showed in that match. Yeah. Against uh, high-tier opponents, it, it really you know, showed what they were doing properly and what they weren't doing yeah, properly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, I'm I'm glad that they showed out, and I'm sorry for the confusion. But you know, I, I the only suggestion I can make to everyone is who might play in a future tournament is uh make sure you're a hundred percent up on what rules we're going by uh, before you play. 
Yeah. All right. Schmidt, did you have anything you wanted to talk about or add with that matchup? No, I think all the bases were covered in that. All right. I'll all right. discuss one hey, last hold on, one. Hold on. Bregan, you didn't get the Bregan spot on that round. Boom. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, well, see, I mean, I instantly won highway as soon as I didn't get the break yeah. spawn. It was my one out of ten. <laughs> there we, you go. In fact, in fact, the break and spawn is so impactful that when I didn't have it, we didn't even take a single point of damage on highway. We both finished with 20 health. Yeah, there you go. That's there what the break and spawn well, does. to be fair, when I would half be of your undefeated on is using charge and <laughs> capsule pop, <laughs> it's pretty easy to not take no damage. I don't think they threw a single attack on Look, that way, look, the takeaway here is that I wouldn't just thing? be undefeated on Palace. I would also be undefeated on Highway if not for the break and spawn. That's the takeaway. Are you still undefeated on Palace? Like, it, I mean, th there's been like one or two through the like last seven tournaments, but for the most part, it is still mostly a clean run on Palace. Like I'm, that, I'm probably still like something like from... 40 and... Oh, yeah. okay. If I had to guess, I'm probably yeah. like 40 and 3 on Palace. Yeah, I let him win because I know, you know, it means a lot to him. I didn't want to shut him down with a 3-0 and have him lose Palace. So and then after I that, he rigged every single map, so I got terrible draws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a dick. All right. Last one, um, we had Mirage and Darcia taking on War Machine and oh. a Millstone weight. <laughs> also known as. Also known in some places as Afrin Jalmain. Uh, however, despite the Millstone about his neck, War Machine was able to pull out that series and not just pull it out, but with a 3-0 victory over Mirage and Darcia. Honestly, War Machine played fantastic to be able to pull out that 2v1. Truly impressed. It was impressive. What did you think of that round, Schmidt? I mean, I was, like I commented on the Facebook post, my jaw was dropped the entire match. I did not expect anything in that match to go in War Machine's favor. Um, and it seems as though he had a, a ghost helping him out sometimes. But yeah. other than that, he had a 2v1 and pulled it out. I was wondering when he was going to institute the silent rule because it didn't seem like he had a partner. But then I remembered he did. Just a useless one. But he still <laughs> did it. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to give it for the opposite <laughs> side of that it. coin. Don't you do it, Affin, <laughs> Affin was doing do a it. phenomenal job as well, Boot him, laying man. down damage. <laughs> Boot him. <laughs> Affin grabbed a mid-range attack, stood in a sensible and location, and fired it like at least twice. Yeah, so I, mean, I will give him that. Last podcast, that's the one thing that we that we all agreed that Affin needed to do is he needs to stand in the middle and throw something. That's it. Yep. Just a quick blaster, stand somewhere where you have the ability to hit people, and just shoot it. Well, Alex, uh, you're so quiet. I forgot you were here, man. What, what do you have any thoughts on any of these? Oh, geez, I forgot uh, he was here too. Matches we've discussed. He may not even be here. He uh, left to go get food. Oh no, he's here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just kidding. I am just impressed. Who I don't know. It was Madman or or Mr. Matt who tried so many times to revive his partner. In, in <laughs> that would be Matt. That nah, was Matt. Yeah. <laughs> we may yeah, have so, focused uh, on Madman so that Matt still had shields. Yeah, Matt, I Matt did that, have a good pickup uh, on Palace. He did have one impressive one where he had like. I think that uh, Math has always flown under the radar and has always been a very, very good player. And a lot of at people. His, at his top, don't. I would agree, but yeah. I think he's a solid mechanical player, but he more or less has one style. Yeah, that too. He ru he runs Nature Faith. That and by that, we mean he runs like three Ice Swords, three Flame Swords, and three Lightning Swords. And one Rian. <laughs> yeah, like he, he's all about them Nature Swords, and yeah. I, I, I think he's... You know, up there in the A tier for mechanics, but I would like to see him show more flexibility, for one. Right. Yeah. But um, the Mirage and Darcia match, I will say, War Machine did it. You can't really see it because from uh, who was recording, I think it was Darcia. Um, War Machine had some nice dodges where he was getting 
um, double teamed and uh, still was able to dodge stuff that's slow jumping Freya. Um, and then on Pano, we did that commentary together, Bregan, and, and watching Darcy and not be able to find his partner. <laughs> Oh, it was heart wrenching. <laughs> Watching Darcia not able to find his shields was worse. <laughs> that There's too. a lot of a lot of players. I love my boy Darcia, but that man's shield timing has it's got to improve. It does. We're gonna do a we're we're gonna do a montage together and uh, pick it up. Thirty second montage on how to use shields. Fix it. No, we need to just do a <laughs> montage of all the matches we've had to sit through and watch with people having shields in their hands and refusing to hit the damn button. Yeah, Snow Schmidt, you're on that list. Hey, I mean, Snow, I'll be the Snow first one to admit so. that I'm on the list. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say Snow, Snow Rise, Rise, but he's not here right so now. On that so, list. Yeah, yeah, he is, but he's not here for me to pick at. So. You got Snow in your name. You're on the list. Oh, you're yeah, on the list. <laughs> it's how it is. It's poking fun. <laughs> you're on the I list. Am. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's assuming I even have a shield in hand. Half my deck. Yeah, who, who rarely have who a shield? What's a shield when you have void? Yeah, right? Come on. <laughs> Most underrated skill. <laughs> Those 15 seconds, boy. You know, I had a, a buddy of mine used to run a Vibration Void Recall deck. That Just, sounds awful. It, it actually wasn't half bad. It was one of his better arsenals for a long time. Uh, it, it, was ba- it was basically Tiger Strength Lasers, <laughs> Tiger Strength Vibration with Voids thrown in. And then you just recall them. He had like maybe... One or two shields, but he almost always had a void with a bunch of relearns. Thought, Otherwise, he would just fire at range. I was talking earlier about the bravery decision recall loops that I was playing around with not that long ago, and I do find that like when you toss in like void or optic camo, they they come up very frequently, like a lot more frequently than yeah. you would think. Yeah, I, I had a invisibility arsenal, and you will draw your optical camos every game. You will. Also, uh, self shout out to myself for the Accelerate Void Optic Camo Recall deck. Oh, uh, the one that made some poor choices quit playing forever. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen that. No regrets. In, in a while. I haven't watched Thanks it because it's like an hour and a half long. So I watched. Well, it the refinery one. That that was my favorite one of them all. Was the one where I did optical camo and void recall. That I one was my favorite. That far into it, I stopped watching after Lane. Lane I, was enough for me to say, uh, I'm done. That was Refinery, so I think you would have seen that one. Well, he brain dumped it because it was awful. It's <laughs> fantastic. It's glorious. It's going down in the annals of PD history. Mm. Like your Rock Shot video. Yep, yep. Just made and minted today. All right, I think that takes us to uh, playoffs round one. Um, first thing we got to do though, is part of the rules here was the number one seed in, uh, play or not playoffs in the Swiss rounds. Before we, before we get to that, do you want to do what murder was trying to do earlier? The, your biggest upset or whatever it was. I don't remember what it was. Biggest, but... uh, surprise beach round. I think you want to do that at the end because he had more stuff he wanted to add to it. Yeah. Let's do that at the end. Um, so murder and Mario did finish number one. And so they get to choose their opponent. They are able to choose between myself and PDDCM, Evo and Sandal, and Zanxis and Zexus. Uh, I know who they've chosen, but for our audience, uh, who are you going to call out and play for the first round of playoffs, Murder? So I was going to do this in a Randy Macho Man Savage voice, but my kids are asleep and I can't. So do just, it. I can't. My kids are asleep. You've got to do it. <laughs> Step outside. Step outside and get stabbed. I live in the ghetto. Um, so... <laughs> Who's going to stab Mario you in the ghetto if you talk like Randy Macho Man S- Savage? They're going to run. No, no. Just rip off Black your shirt. I'm not scared of Randy Macho Man Savage. So me and Mario talked about it, and we decided to bite the bullet and just go ahead and face Zexus as Zexus for our round one matchup. Just because, no away. offense to anyone else, yep, I think if we were to win past round one, we would have to fight them eventually. So... Do it now. So, Zanxus is Zanxus. Let's do it again. I want to brawl. Let's get it on! There you go. Thank there you. we go. All right. Well, I am excited for that one. Let's talk about that matchup a little bit then. Um, 
Evo, what do you think you're going to see in this rematch? Do you think Zanxis and Zexis are going to play cute again, or do you think they're going to bring out their standard stuff, and then who do you think wins in that? I don't know, man. Honestly, um, I uh, I know Zex has got a lot going on with work. He doesn't have time to get on and practice anymore, and it shows. Um, you know, I'm not throwing no shade at my buddy, but you know, Mario and and Murder are looking really, really good. Um, I don't know if they can win a straight up fight at this point. Um, did you not see Zexus manhandle? You couldn't see it, but I was getting wrecked by Zexus on Refinery 101. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did see that. I think I called that out. You're like at four health, and he's running around at like 20. I'm like, dude, Zexus just put a smackdown on murder. Well, I didn't, I, well, I didn't see fair, that. To be fair, I did have Fire Gahana. I lost like six health to Fire Gahana. But if that's uh, but the case, then, you know, <laughs> you might be seeing uh, Mario sitting out the remainder of the tournament, but uh, as of right now, from how it looks, um, you know, Murder Mario looking awesome. And I don't know if that's on the brain of Xan and Zex and maybe the reason why they ran some of their cutesy stuff. But um, if you guys are listening, leave the cute stuff to me and Sandal. You guys just do your <laughs> thing. <laughs> Let the meme uh, lords no. do their job. <laughs> um. I, I hope they do fight because I think that would be a really, really, really fun match to cast, let alone watch. And uh, that's that's hopefully what I'll get to see. So, but to answer your question as honestly as I can, if they run cutesy stuff again, um, honest opinion, Mario and Murder take it. If they brawl it out, uh, it depends on what shape I think Zex is in that particular moment. If he's playing good, he might be in trouble, Murder. If he's tired and just did a 60-hour <laughs> work week, uh, I don't know. So, I just, I, I want to watch. I can't wait to see. That's that's basically what it's going to boil down to. I cannot fucking wait. Whoever wins, the viewers win. Yeah. Alright, Schmidt, who do you think takes it? Well, kind of like we were talking about earlier, and uh, when we were talking about the round four matchup, I think that Zanxis and Zexus knew that if, as long as they won one uh, in round four, they couldn't get out of the top four, and that they were going to... They had the confidence in themselves that they would face Murder Mario again. Um, and that I think that they, are, they know that they are going to have to brawl it out and throw it back to old Zanxus Zexus and just try and beat face and whittle down Murder Mario as fast and as efficiently as possible and I think they're going to try and bring their A game and I'm going to have to give it to Zanxus Zexus Alright, 3-2, 3-1 3-0 3-0 With the way that Murder and Mario have been playing this tournament I think that they are definitely going to give them a run for their money but I think it's going to be a 3-1 uh, much like round 4 just in the reverse order all right, I hear you, Schmidt. Murder sucks. Whoa, whoa, I'm not shooting shots. That's what I heard. Oh, no. That's what I heard, too. Moving on. Nah, you live better than me. <laughs> you live like two hours from me. I'll get you, Snow Schmidt. Oh, whatever. Bring it. <laughs> All right, Alice, who takes this Have match and why? Murder? I think um, more than Mario take it. What's the score? Uh, I'm going to say 3-2. 3-2, and what gives them the edge? Why do they win? Well, I told you they were, go they were going to defeat you, so... No, I oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like ales. <laughs> you know what? You know what I'm hearing? <laughs> Bregan sucks. <laughs> that? That's true. He did low-key throw some time. shade at me there. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's going to be a really close matchup. Um, I think I have to... Lean with Murder and Mario just because they look clean so far. Um, I'm going to give it to them in another 3-1. And I think part of what gives it this way for me too is just uh, 
that big dick energy calling him out. Like, you just can't deny that. Like, he's got to be in their heads a little bit after this. Like, I just slapped him down, and I could have chosen to play anyone, uh, even a team where somebody hasn't played in two years, and I chose <laughs> you. So I, I think that's going to be in their heads, no matter – even if they tell themselves – that it's not in their heads. I think it's going to be in their heads. And so I got to give the edge to Murderer Mario. 3-1. Man, I disagree. They get so fucking high before they play. I don't I don't <laughs> think anything's going on in their head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever played with Zan after he just got done smoking. But there ain't a whole lot going on, bro. <laughs> Funny. Mario has that same tradition. So Mario, just follow suit. We'll, we'll do okay. Come on now. All right. Mm. Next matchup. Uh, for those who don't remember, we're doing a playoffs actually for every single team. Uh, there's going to be three brackets. So there's the pl- the playoffs wait, 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 bracket no, itself. Your match with I'm you getting votes? there. I'm getting there. Oh, okay, okay. But we're doing the playoffs bracket. So there's going to be the top four teams fighting for the actual tournament win. And then the middle bracket's going to have four teams fighting it out for their own little mini you know, bit of pride. And then we've got the lower bracket uh, where we're going to have a couple of teams fighting it out as well. So uh, the last matchup of the actual, you know, tournament win possibility playoffs bracket will be myself and PDDCM versus Evolution and Sandal. Uh, so saving our trash talk for each other, I suppose, right now. Uh, Snow Schmidt, what do you think that matchup's going to look like and who do you predict to win? So I think Evil and Sandal have had their fun in the previous matches, and they're actually going to show up full force, no jokes, and just try and bring a beat down. But I think you, Bregan, and PD are kind of expecting that and are ready to just try and full force it back. And it's going to be a brawl. And I think no matter who wins, it's going to be a 3-2. Um, but with the way that everybody's playing right now, I'm going to have to give it to Bregan and PD as long as the draws are good and actually on your <laughs> side. But if you draw like you did in these previous rounds, I'm going to have to give it to Evo and Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Bregan and PD win unless Phantom Dust decides they don't win. <laughs> Let it be known. What do you What do you think, Alice? Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of want that... that that Evo and Sandal win, but but it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. I I, I cannot agree with 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 Snow Schmidt that it's gonna be a three two. No no matter what, no matter who wins. All right, I guess I can try and make it messy for you instead of what I did last <laughs> round. <laughs> what about you, Murder? What do you think? I'm gonna I'm gonna say three two for uh, Evo and Sandal. You bitch. I think they're gonna not bring the ultra cute jank, but bring some more uh, tried and tested. And it's gonna sweep you guys off your feet. I'm gonna take you out in the finals. You heard it here first. What I'm hearing <laughs> is well, you're not able to because uh, you're gonna lose to Evo and Sandal, like I just said. So. <laughs> You won't have your chance. You're going to eat your words. <laughs> You're going down. I think it's going to be a fun uh, matchup. I think it'll be fun no matter what. into this with Sandal. Like, we already discussed it. Like, we're, we're just happy we made it out of Swiss. Um, so we're just, you know, the the stress isn't there anymore. Yeah, uh, that, that was going to be I, my I'm biggest perfectly, surprise. <laughs> I'm perfectly satisfied with a fourth place finish. So... I'm going to bring it, regardless. I, I'm not going to speak on his or Sandal's behalf because he, he speaks for himself, but I'm going to fucking bring the best I can bring. Um, and I'm hoping and praying that the Phantom Dust gods hate Bregan just as much as they <laughs> did in the past and uh, just give him the most shit out in the open spawn because that's all I really, that's all I really need, I think. <laughs> I think it, I think it's going to be a really fun matchup. We've played before in a previous tournament this exact matchup myself and pd versus evo and sandal i think it was a 3-1 i think you picked up one win on highway with a memory lapse no i thought we picked up a win on refinery too i would have to go back and check i I remember at least losing on highway but i don't recall if there was a second map you might have either way it was fun yeah it's it's fun i think it'll be a brawl i think we're of a somewhat similar mindset like i think we're both going to be pushing we want to make finals but at the same 
point, you know, we're both pretty happy that we made the top four. Uh, we had a Dude, strong I, showing I in the Swiss. I teamed up with a guy who has not played in literally, not like PD and you, like you keep saying, because you guys pop in and out here and there, mostly PD. <laughs> Sandal has not fucking picked up a controller in like two goddamn years, and we made it this far, so I'm happy. That's, I'm happy as can be. You still lost a fast bomb. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you win. You have lost the fastball. That's the problem. I'm gonna fucking kill you with fast bomb. One of the matches, you're, well, you're okay, dying with fast like bomb. Now I'm staying. I will give you fifty dollars. I will give you fifty dollars. On Cash App or something, if you can manage to kill me with Fast Bomb in our match. Oh, there's money on the line now. If I manage to kill you with Fast Bomb. Evo, huh? don't take the bet. It's a trap. It's a oh, trap. Great, it's, order. <laughs> it's a trap. I'm going to fucking say it'll infinite stun your ass and then I'll go over and Fast Bomb you. Yeah, just permanent entangle okay. him and keep now, getting the Fast Bomb. No, I'm just kidding. Nope, nope, now I have to change my answer now. Evo. Okay. That's fine. Evo's gonna lose the fast bomb. <laughs> He's gonna lose another match to fast bomb. <laughs> I'd be honest with you, like this is this is gonna be uh, out of everyone in the entire tournament. I think at, at, out of everyone, this is the number one team that I was most concerned with. Not because of like personal skill or who they are, but because they're a jumper cartwheeler combination. We have tech for dual jumpers. We have tech for cart, dual cartwheelers, but it's very hard to to prepare for both in the same matchup. Um, we're both pretty conservative players too, so that doesn't yeah, make it any easier. That's the other thing too. And we, like, we're I mean, we're both aware that of what you and Sandal do as well. <laughs> it's not like we're going to we show up and same. get hoodwinked. We can say the same, Mister Forest Sanctuary Reduce Entropy. Don't forget seven rock shot too in that name. Yeah, put some rock shot on my name. Rock shot. I, I'm not worried about rock shot. Rock shot's a useless, useless skill. No rock one runs shot. flash holes anymore. It's all about <laughs> dark holes. Skill. That's what the heat's for. Get, get about the debris bullet life, bro. <laughs> Out spam them. I mean, if you wanted to get ahead of the dark hole in the first place, the debris bullet's not going to do that either. Yeah, but they damage themselves when they're fucking trying to get it, and you're spent faking it out, and then all of a sudden, bam, six you damage fucking debris bullet. You can still do that with a rock shot. No, you can't, because it costs three. <laughs> all right, moving on. All right, so now I think it's going to get a little more fun in the middle and lower brackets with the predictions. Because um, I think we've talked at length already about you know who our favorites are to win the tournament and stuff like that, and I think most of those have made it into the top four. So we'll, we won't make a prediction on who wins the tournament outright right now. Uh, but I think it'll be fun to, to predict who wins the middle bracket and the lower bracket as well as their own matchups. Uh, so right off the bat, take a look at the middle bracket if you haven't already. Is there anybody that can't see it? Uh, I'm not even looking at my phone. So we're just going to say who we think is going to win each bracket? Yeah, and then we'll, we'll talk about the matchups too. But I want to I say get a prediction right off the bat. Who do you think wins uh, the middle and lower brackets? I'll share it so to right our little... I'm going to say oh, the middle easy. bracket, yeah, is gonna, definitely going to be Ebony and Daffy. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think they're going to take it pretty cleanly over everyone in there. Sorry, Snow Patrol. No, it's fine. I mean, I have, my <laughs> prediction is the exact same thing. As, Daffy, yep. uh, as much as I would like it to be us, no, I think Daffy and has got it. Yeah, Ebony is, I know some people disagree, but Ebony is up there uh, in the top players in the game and his skill level vastly outnumbers anyone else in this bracket so i was not on the ebony train yeah a month or two ago but dude ebony is a beast i don't care i don't care what play style he uses he rubbed me wrong with his constant use of quantum decay and all that shit and i was not all for ebony but dude he he handles his shit with all other aspects of the game as well. Yeah, so, so I definitely... I, I have Ebony. to say my stock of Ebony has also gone up, but for me, the big thing is, like, I feel like he's a very complete player by himself, but I feel like he doesn't always work with a partner 
as well as he should. Uh, I, no, I feel like that's, that's his deficiency. True. He's a fantastic pickup artist, and he does all sorts of great things, but I feel like sometimes his ability you don't to play with him enough, then. work with a partner I, I disagree. still falls short I disagree. for me. If you played with him more, you you would you wouldn't say that. Like, it, I don't know. I'm not gonna fucking vouch for him if it's not if it's not truly how I feel. And he is a very good at teamwork with whoever he's playing with. Yeah, and then uh, so that's my top pick for the middle tier. And then the last tier, it's a good one. Um, but I'm gonna have to give it to Skabas and Killer Mark. <clears throat> Right. <laughs> hey, I want to see you more fast bombs and pull right. out more jank. But Skabas has uh, really surprised me this tournament, so. Yes. Well, hold on now. You're looking at the lower bracket. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. You're talking about Ailes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that, okay. Yeah, Ailes. Yeah. So, uh, Ebony. D- damn it, Athen. Why do you have these stupid names in here? <laughs> Ebony and Daffy and Killer Mark and Skabas. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Ebony and Daffy, Nathan and Wolf, and then Ebony and Daffy again. And then I'll go Skabas and Killer Mark, Mirage and Darcia, actually. And I, I like more Machine, and I have total respect for him and his jumping ability as a Freya. But I don't think um, they just got dunked three zero. Yeah, but I don't think Athens going to keep up again. He he, <laughs> he had a, a, a flyby <laughs> luck of the dragon kind of thing going on, and it just it's gone now. It's it's run out. Well, everything that went wrong with Bregan was the opposite for Athens. He drew energy from Bregan and pulled it out. Just come back, Athens. Stealing my energy. Damn it, Athens. <laughs> So, so Scott Boss and Killer Mark are your picks to win that bracket as well? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Scott Boss is anyway. – you know, um, Killer Mark is not quite up there as far as, like, consistent skill level – skill play goes. But he knows how to fucking put an attack in his hand or a shield in his hand and knows how to use them both. So, yeah, he, I mean, he has that's all you really need. He still has surprise in this tournament with some of the stuff he's done, so – yeah. I mean, hell, they took, what, uh, a game off of Ebony and Daffy on Palace, of all maps. Yeah. Like, yeah, one of Ebony's exactly. best. And it was, it was, it was de- a definitive win, too. I mean, they Yeah, were... I mean, the chaos just shut Ebony down so hard, it's not even funny. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Wink, <laughs> wink, Alice. Chaos. <laughs> Well, Ebony ain't oh wait, no that's fool. right. It's he's not playing Ebony. He's playing Scott oh, Boss and Killer Mark. Never mind. Ebony ain't no fool, man. He'll be prepared for that. Okay. Um, what about you, Alice? Who takes the middle bracket? Who's who is the eventual winner? Mm, I want I want the snow so much to win the middle bracket. I thought we were gonna we were gonna end in the middle bracket. I I thought we I thought we were gonna defeat the snow, but then we got. <laughs> we got our in that, <laughs> in that match. Yeah, that match did surprise me. I I did think Snows were gonna win, but I didn't think it was gonna be a uh, definitive Yo. win like it was. Oh. Yeah, I I thought it was gonna be more back and forth. I mean, it was the matches weren't um dirty, but yeah, Snows took it for sure. That the, did surprise me. The Snows did to you what Madman and Math did to them in round three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right back. full circle. Yeah, we uh. We actually like went out and practiced and uh, did that, and so amazing. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's crazy what practice. How much does. that'll do? All right. Did you guys just stand in front of each other and block attacks for like an hour? So, oh no, Rise would never do that. That would make him better as a player. <laughs> so let's talk about that Shade. matchup though. Then uh, the actual direct matchup. So if we're all so set on Daffy and Ebony, you know, at least winning the first round. Uh, which I think that's actually going to be a good one because I think Math will be able to more closely match Ebony and Madman's, you know, close to the level of Daffy. So I think that'll be still Ebony favored, but uh, a better matchup than people are giving it credit for. But for the Snow Rise and Schmidt versus Nathan and Wolf, how do you guys think that one's going to play out? I think that Why one should they be play fun. Play already once? No. Mm-mm. No. 
Uh-oh. I think that all depends on uh, how much pressure snow the snows can do targeting a soul uh, opponent. If you, if you try to split up, it's not going to work so well. Um, but if you guys can like actually coordinate attacks, one fire a blaster and a split second later, the other one's you know in his face with a lightning sword or whatever the case is, that that's going to be the difference maker. But if you guys try to take them on one on one and separate, uh, I don't think it's going to work out. They run a lot of erase shields and Rian, nothing spectacular or anything fancy per se, unless they hang on you. you better be prepared for that. Hmm. You run Judgment and Armoros, you'll be alright. And Diabolical. Diabolical trick, too. You'll be okay. But Yeah, I think yeah. that one's going to be a close one. I can't... It just does depend what each team runs, because I think each team can win against uh, each other, but it just really just depends on what they run. Yeah. yeah. Like, for instance, if both the Snows run their braveries and Nathan and Wolf run... Mm-hmm. You know, memory lapse, <laughs> memory lapse, or their vicious balance, and uh, yeah, you may not have fun that day. So. I mean, nature faith is going to be the snow's best friend. Yeah, for, I would just match up. straight up not run bravery versus them. Period. Go and try it. <laughs> just don't do it. No bravery. No, no, I'm gonna do it every round. I don't see the problem. You should. You should. Prove oh, us yeah. wrong. I'm gonna run bravery <laughs> with a single fast bomb in there. <laughs> But yeah, I think that game can go either way, so I'm not can. sure to say there. It really can. It all, it like, it all really depends on the coordination between the snows and what Nathan and Wolf decide to run, and if the snows are prepared for the hang or for the stat buffs. All right, let's head down the list then. Um, Alice, who's taking the lower bracket? Are you going to put your money on you, or what other team other than yourself would you put your money on? Looking forward, me or 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 Scabos and Kidamas, because Scabos has been a really great play, player in, in these last matches. Yeah, Scabos has astounded me with some of his his callouts. Have you guys noticed his communication with instructing and like, you know, yeah. guiding yeah. Mark into position like that? That has oh, been yeah. that alone has been like. Really Which was surprised me because anytime I play with Skabas, he doesn't talk. So now I'm doing. Yeah, he's very quiet. Hates me. Well, I mean, he he hates nice. Me. Not just he's communication, quiet, but I was no, he, really. He has a kid sleeping in the background. Usually, I think that's what it is. I was just kidding. I was really surprised by like before the tournament started. He was looking for a partner for a long time, and I was like, man, that guy's stock should be pretty high. He's played well in the last several tournaments, but he basically, you know got auto-partnered with Killamark towards the end because neither one could really find a partner. And so I think after this tournament, once again, Skaboss's stock should be pretty high. You know, if you're a mid-table player looking to find another underappreciated mid-table player and make a, a run at, like, top four in a tournament, Skaboss is a name you should be looking at. I think Skaboss and SC War Machine would make... if they Like, I know they yeah. teamed up in the past, but they weren't on the same caliber of play then. Like if they were to team up now, they would be very formidable of a team to play against. Yeah, and then also Skabot, someone needs to teach Skabot how to build arsenal still because they. Still That's something that him. I've already handled. He's got sixteen arsenals in a separate profile of revamped. It's already been done. He he ran that psychoburst arsenal, the psychoburst vibration blaster, and he needs a dazzle in there. But okay. <laughs> yeah, that was uh when I was going over arsenals with him, he that was one that he sent me a picture of and I was like, damn that shit looks familiar. That's one that I used to run with a charged particle and dazzle and all that shit. And um he uh he liked it, I guess. He played me against it a couple times and he tried to rebuild his version of it. And I don't know, he's he loves it. But yes, it does need a dazzle, for sure. That all right. Um Murder, have you made your predictions, or who am I missing? Is it Evolution? Yeah, no, they're mean. Oh, I've made mine already, I think. I said yeah, Skabos. Yeah, I think that was everyone. Did I ask Schmidt? I mean, I mm. think it's kind of on, on the table. I think Skyboss is also going to win the low bracket. All right. Well, let's, I guess, do our last couple ones real quick, then. 
what team has surprised you by their performance the most? That can be through uh, underwhelming or overwhelming, you know, like uh, they overperformed or underperformed, whichever okay, you I'm think. Gonna, I'm looking at the teams right now, and I'm going to yell at Affin one more time for his stupid team names. Okay. I mean, you can see them over in the round one or round two. Yeah, if you look I there. yeah, I, I scrolled up. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm not surprised that they are evil and sandal. I'm surprised with how they entered the tournament. Were able to get to the top four. Um, yeah, Coming off a they, uh, three zero was rough. Yeah, it was nerve wracking. Well, they I think you got you guys came off a it was a three zero and then a zero three. Yeah. Right? Is that what it was? So, yeah. 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 That started you off at like a 1.5. Mm hmm. While there were, were already teams who had like three, one, two, three, one victories and three, two victories. So, yeah, it's impressive they were able to get into the top four. Um, and then, but other than that, uh, like I said, Skabas and Killer Mark, I mean, they are in the lower bracket, but still, I'm still surprised um, by how well they were able to work together. So, what about you, Schmidt? Um, I mean, honestly, it was Daffy and Ebony that surprised me the most. From the beginning, I thought they were going to be in the final four no matter what, but these past two rounds, I mean, it kind of shocked me in the reverse as it, like, people have kind of figured out their strategy and just counterplayed them to the max, and I don't think that they really kind of understood what to do when somebody figured out the hole in their strategy, and I they've been suffering because of it, in my opinion. And I think that's the most surprising part is that they haven't figured out how to rebound from it. Yeah, I think uh, Ebony and Daffy also had the unlucky pleasure of playing Zexus and Zexus twice in the Swiss rounds, which not many people would argue with as a bad draw. Um, but they had to do it twice and uh, lost both times. It's hard to come back off that. Right. I wouldn't necessarily call it a hole in their strategy. Um I think that Zan and Zex basically, like Refinery was a really good example. They just, they are superior mechanical players to Daffy and they use that to their advantage. I don't think it was a strategy, uh, a hole in Ebony and Daphne, Daffy's strategy per se, but it was more of a power play move by Zan and Zex. Um, but they're also who I pick as who surprised me the most because when I first heard they were teaming up, I saw no synergy whatsoever possibly coming out of this team. And uh, they proved me wrong completely. Uh, they actually work fairly well together. Um, there's just that skill gap is the only issue. Yeah. <clears throat> what about you, Murder? Uh, I already gave mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Alice. Oh, you're good. I too already gave mine. You already gave your your team that surprised you the most. Ah no no no, I think it was it was like Murder and Mario because I didn't know them. Uh, I just saw them and I I think they were gonna end in, in middle bracket because I don't know who, I didn't know how who they played. But after that, I would say that he won, he won Sandal. He won Sandal ending in, in, in the first four. Yeah, that's impressive for sure. I mean, after oh, you yeah. killed him with Fast Bomb, you think it would have all been downhill from there. <laughs> you just can't help yourself, huh? I can't. I'm going to beat it until it's a dead horse. All right. And then beat it some more. Oh, yeah. That's my mantra. What about you, Schmidt? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I talked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think Am I the one. only one that hasn't? Yeah. yeah. Am I still allowed to say Doom and Kanye? <laughs> uh, I honestly <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> that. That did surprise me. That was a team that, that should have been so clean, and then for them to implode that poorly in that matchup, it was truly impressive to see. I mean, don't get me wrong, Murder and Mario played fantastically, but... Like, uh, once sign happened, you know, they're both running around wearing clown face paint. Like, that was that was nuts to see. Because they're, they're a team that should have been, I think, easily a top three team in this tournament. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was surprising. <laughs> All right. Yep. Anybody else have any last bits they want to address? Last jokes? 
jabs. Nah. Ready to just have a fun matchup, Reagan. I, I am too. I'm looking forward to it. Fast bomb. Um, PD actually sent me a message because he's been listening in. Um, he he proposed um, only rock shot versus only debris bullet. No race, no stat buffs, no shields. Oh, that'll be a fun one. <laughs> Against uh, as far as who, only you're allowed to run rock shot, and only I'm allowed to run debris bullet, or both teams. Period. Like both players on each. We team. we only run rock shot. You only run debris bullet. Oh, we win easy. <laughs> <laughs> all rock shot versus all debris bullet, no race, final destination. I mean, if you have six aura and I have six aura, you can throw yours twice. I can throw mine three times. I'm pretty sure we're gonna we're gonna win that battle. He said no buffs though. Wait, I'll no, need no buffs. No flash. No <laughs> they said no shields. No I, shields. What do I care about buffs for? I mean, Mine has better fun. tracking, and it's more spammable. I think that would be a fun one just to do as an extra match afterwards, like however oh, yeah. the series ends, just like go to city or lane or something and do that. Only rock uh, shot versus uh, only would, the pre bullet. I would, I would take that match up if I was using stone shot over rock shot. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Honestly, I think you'd have a better shot with Stone Shot than Debris Bullet in that matchup, just because you get the spam ability and the guaranteed damage. I mean, Debris Bullet's pretty guaranteed damage if I'm throwing three of them back to back. I mean, if you think you're going to stand still in a matchup like that and fire three of them at a time, then I think you're already set to lose. <laughs> uh, position play, sir. Something you know nothing about, mister. I get Ooh. fucked every time I play Highway or City. Damn. All right, now you guys have to do it. Yeah. yeah. The, la- the, lag like it. the lag test. The lag test can be <laughs> Oh, yeah. There it is. We'll, we'll do it as a bonus round after if everybody agrees. We'll see. All right. Well, I think that wraps us up then. Thank you, everyone, for uh, I, tuning in. Oh, you got something you wanted to, to add? Say, yeah, yeah, I want to say I, I, I'm going to use a, a fast bomb arsenal, but <laughs> not in the way to do damage, but in another way. Oh boy, I'm excited. <laughs> All right, well that does wrap us up. Thanks everyone for joining us here on the podcast and for those listening. Uh, we will have some of the video footage of this coverage coming. Uh, you should have your group chats up hopefully by tomorrow afternoon, if not by tonight. Why do I feel like I'm going to see Fast Bomb and Guardian Angel and Annoying Gifts <laughs> come into play? <laughs> if that's the case, I can promise you this. You won't get out of the blast radius of a Fast Bomb and get back in it fast enough to place another one before Guardian Angel's animation is up. No, no, no I'm not going to try that. Okay. I was just seeing. I know. That's the only thing that came to mind. All right. Good night, everyone.